great sea ice melt, a tipping point for rapid climate change. This time we've embarked upon a warming trend that won't end until we do something about ending it. The greatest change to the planet's environment many of us will ever see. The vast sea ice that spreads over the North Pole could disappear for weeks or even months in the Arctic summer. The last time this happened, scientists tell us, was long before humans set foot on the Earth. The Arctic sea ice is retreating as climate change advances. The change being felt in this fragile world is caused by us. And it's happening so fast, it's defying scientific models. What you have to remember is that even three or four years ago, the scientific community was saying, this is an emergency, this is something serious. We could have an ice-free Arctic by the year 2070, by the year 2080. In the last few years, those predictions have come way, way in towards the present. And now we're saying maybe 2030, maybe 2020. There's a group that makes a very strong case that in 2013 we'll have an ice-free Arctic, as soon as that. Well, we're looking here at a satellite animation of September sea ice extent extending from 1979 through the year 2006. This red line that you see, that's showing where ice ought to extend to on a typical year. The September of 2007, it was the least sea ice we'd ever seen in the satellite record. Everything we look at tells us that what we saw in September 2007 is unprecedented. It may well be the least sea ice we've seen in thousands of years. So if we look at it, in September of 1980, the size of the Arctic sea ice cover was pretty much the same size as Australia, give or take a little bit. Now, if we move forward in time to September of 2007, that's how much of Australia would have melted to be the same equivalent amount of sea ice melting. But just as the shrinking of the great Arctic sea ice is alarming scientists, it's triggering a new Arctic race for oil and gas that will produce more greenhouse gases. For a few brief weeks last summer, this passage was virtually clear of sea ice. It was a stunning event, and the Northwest Passage made headlines around the world. Right now, a Northwest Passage looks impossible. But several Arctic shipping passages, including one across the North Pole, are being seriously discussed. As the sea ice retreats, not only shipping, but oil and gas companies have visions of an Arctic bonanza. Some are calling it the new cold rush. The disappearing sea ice is now expected to open up more oil and gas prospects for the five Arctic powers. Norway, Russia, Canada, Denmark, and the US. The US Geological Survey reported that 13% of the world's undiscovered oil and 30% of the undiscovered natural gas can be found in the Arctic. But those already concerned about climate change are watching the developments with growing anxiety. I think people see the contradiction, but I think in the globalized economics of oil and its consumption and demand and the fact that you see record prices for oil, that energy companies, until the rules of the game change, are going to follow the oil, even to previously hostile environments and trains like the Arctic. This light change is happening, and I've watched it happening, and I've walked along that path. But the other part is the modelers say that this ocean will be seasonally ice-free. Initially, they said by the end of the century, 2100. And then they said 2070. And then they said 2050. And then they said 2030. And there was a very recent one when I was up on the Amundsen a couple months ago. You know, and said maybe by 2013. So not only do I see the change happening, but it's like they're moving the goalposts towards me. And, and it's 
it's, a, it's an amazing thing. And, and to put it in context, the Arctic Ocean has not been seasonally clear of ice for a couple of million years at least, maybe longer. So this is very extraordinary. broke up rapidly with the help of southerly winds and warm currents. A perfect storm of weather events led to that record melt. To us, this ice looked thick and packed as far as the eye could see. But the ice observer saw a lot more than we could. Uh, most of what we're seeing is thick first year ice with a trace of multi-year in the area as well. And the ice uh, with all the meltwater on it is in its rotting stage. The record melt last year has left the sea ice thin. It's first year ice that froze just last autumn. But it's not the year to year change that matters, it's the long term trend. And already this year, the sea ice has shrunk to below average levels. Dr. Don Perovich is one of America's leading sea ice researchers. He and his colleagues believe a feedback mechanism is at work that is accelerating the melt as the ice retreats. Where does the feedback come in? Well, we look here, we see the sea ice reflects around 85% of the light. But as that ice melts back, it exposes the open ocean. And the open ocean only reflects 7% of the light. It absorbs 93%. So you can see there's this incredible contrast between snow-covered sea ice and the ocean. Indeed, if we looked at every material on Earth, snow is the best reflector and the ocean is the worst. So as we melt this ice back, we're taking the best reflector and replacing it with the worst. And that can be a feedback because as you melt back, you get more heat put in and you get more melting and more heat. And these feedbacks are really interesting from a climate perspective because they're ways where you can take the climate system, give it a little nudge and have that be amplified into a big shove. Why do we think that global warming, human induced global warming is contributing any to this? first observe and try to understand. And the observations are quite clear cut. We're losing ice, it's a consequence of warming. Now when we try to delineate how much of that warming is perhaps due to natural variability, how much of it is due to you know, an anthropogenic, a human-induced change, the best way to do that is through models. And there have been numerous model runs that have looked at that and basically they can't reproduce the ice loss we've had with natural variability. You have to add a carbon dioxide warming component to it. As the sea ice melt accelerates, the debate over the role we humans are playing has been heated. The more we burn oil, gas and coal, the more we clear land, the more greenhouse gases are being released, adding to the Arctic warming. As temperatures rise in the Arctic regions, there are fears climate change could cause widespread melting of the permafrost. Dr. Romanovsky tells us if that happens, millions of tons of greenhouse gases now trapped in the permafrost could be released into the atmosphere. It is a potentially very significant source of uh, carbon dioxide or methane into the atmosphere. Suddenly, crossing this threshold of thawing permafrost, uh, we'll release this methane and this bomb will explode. So releasing this carbon into the atmosphere can easily double uh, the amount of carbons in the atmosphere. 
what will happen, I think, is that we'll get this whole new source of CO2 and methane from the uh, thawing permafrost that we won't easily be able to shut off, even if we get our act together. That's a real concern to me because that sets us down a road of a much warmer planet where all the game is changed in terms of how you live, where you live. Nearly one quarter of the northern hemisphere is covered in permafrost. You might say, well, okay, what if we have an ice-free summer Arctic? Is that a big deal? As near as we can tell, looking at the historical record, there's been ice in the, in the Arctic in the summer for at least 16 million years. So this would be a big difference. As we left the sea ice in the high Arctic at the end of our journey, we had as many questions as answers. The great sea ice is disappearing faster than all predictions. It will change the planet irrevocably. But we are continuing to push the Arctic towards its tipping point. In the past, the Earth has warmed and cooled. Geologists especially like to talk about how the Earth goes through cycles, how these things uh, represent natural processes in the Earth. Yes, it has gone through changes in the past, but this time it's different. This time we've embarked upon a warming trend that won't end until we do something about ending it. People talk about what sort of anticipated temperature we'll have by the end of the century, the year 2100. I'd like to point out that the Earth doesn't end in the year 2100. Eventually, we have to quit producing these greenhouse gases and putting them in the atmosphere, uh, or we'll see warming continue until levels that are much more dire. Climate doesn't change just by itself. Something has to force that change. It doesn't change by just Harry Potter flicking his magic wand. Something has to force it. In the past, we know that there has been climate change forced by things like solar variability, uh, forced by volcanic eruptions. It's very clear and unambiguous that the changes we've seen over the past 50 years or so are due to increased concentrations of atmospheric greenhouse gases. And we know without a doubt that those increases are due to our activities. They're due to us. Like his colleagues, Dr. Polyakov was shocked by last year's melt. I would say it was a total surprise to the Arctic community. Nobody expected uh, such a dramatic uh, uh, change of Arctic ice over such a short period of time. Dr. Skambos believes in the Arctic, the sea ice melt has reached a tipping point and predicting the speed of climate change there will be increasingly difficult. The tipping point is where you've uh, pushed a system into a state where with no further pushing, uh, it will rapidly change into another state. And what we're seeing right now in the last few years is that the Arctic loses so much of its ice every summer that, again, solar energy heats the water underneath it. The older ice is pushed out of the Arctic Ocean, so there's a very thin cover of ice. And without any further input, it doesn't have to get any warmer. It seems as though the Arctic simply can't recover, can't replace the ice that it's lost every year because every year more heat gets deposited into the Arctic than can be radiated away in, in the winter darkness. Scientists are also worried the sea ice melt will indirectly add to the threat of sea level rise. The retreating sea ice will expose the Arctic shoreline leaving glaciers and the huge Greenland ice sheet more vulnerable to melting. There are concerns that the Greenland ice sheet may be close to what we call a tipping point, a point of instability, that if we warm it up just a little bit more, we could greatly accelerate the mass loss from it, the loss of ice from Greenland that contributes to sea level. Is loss of the sea ice cover part of that? Could it help to trigger some of these accelerated mass losses? We'll have to wait and see. It's hard to believe, but the Arctic gets as much sun as the tropics. It comes in one short burst in summer. That's when millions of seabirds arrive from around the world to fatten up 
and weigh their young. The U.S. Interior Secretary was reluctantly forced to list the polar bear as an endangered species, the reason shrinking sea ice in Alaska. The U.S. government now estimates two-thirds of its polar bear population could disappear within decades. The most immediate worry is that the melting sea ice will intensify the extreme weather caused by climate change, bringing more violent storms and cyclones to some regions and longer droughts to others. The expectation is that we'll see more extraordinary weather in general, but in particular, more frequent droughts in some of the areas that are already prone to dryness, like the southwestern United States, like southeastern Europe and parts of Asia. Uh, seeing more severe droughts in those areas is going to put a severe burden on the water resources there and in some cases food production. What really concerns us from the viewpoint of the climate science is the connectedness of the climate system. In other words, what happens up there in the Arctic, the seemingly far away place, can have profound influences on other parts of the planet. We can think of the Arctic as the refrigerator of the northern hemisphere climate system, just like the Antarctic is the refrigerator of the southern hemisphere. What we're doing by getting rid of that sea ice is radically changing the nature of that refrigerator. We're making it much less efficient, but everything is connected together. So what happens up there eventually influences what happens in other parts of the globe. And that is the weather. That is the weather, yes. And this is particularly important because of, for example, impacts on agriculture. Think of the American breadbasket in the American West and Midwest, where as much corn is grown. We start to change patterns of temperature and precipitation in ways that we're not prepared for. We should care for the sake of an ecosystem that is important to us globally, like the Arctic. We should care for the residents, including humans and animals. And we should, we should care in the sense that what happens here is coming to us.